We still have 15 minutes left of the morning, so. Mm -hmm. um, Dylan, usually Ryan gives me like a little. Yeah, he said not today. Good. <laughs> I was led to a particular message today from um, from my book, A Call to Trust. And I can't tell you what joy it put in my heart again, just in remembering so many wonderful things that uh, back in the time the Lord put on my heart that is very fresh, very fresh for today. So I want to share that message with you. And then we'll talk a little bit about it. Can't hear me? Unfortunately, in the meantime, and unfortunately, some of our brochure, a good portion, probably three quarters of our mailing list, did not receive their newsletter or brochures. We did them by bulk mail, and um, there was some kind of mix up, mishap, whatever, that they were dumped someplace and left. So, if you did not get our brochure of the, all the upcoming events, Please check on the, the table outside. We have them. And please take them to your churches if you can. Ask permission of your pastor first and uh, pass them out. We don't have the money to resend them. It's, it's just too expensive. Or to reprint them. So, And we want to make sure that everybody receives the information. Okay, there we go. Better? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's get down to the most important business. That of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's so good. Jesus says, Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, my people, I love you. I, the Lord God, desire to fill every emptiness that you have ever had or will ever have. It is not necessary, my children, for you to feel my presence. You are my most beloved family. You just need to know and believe fully that I rest in you. Believe that where the two rivers Eucharist and reconciliation run together. There am I. Come to me in the tribunal of my mercy and be enveloped by my mercy. Then come to me in the Eucharist and bask in my divine presence. Jesus, your loving Savior. Well, that brought some very beautiful memories to my heart and to my mind that I want to share with you today. The most important thing after forgiving me of my sins that Jesus ever said to me that I know is truth and that I know is the foundation of this ministry is I desire healing for every strata of the church. And then by way of the two rivers that run together, Eucharist and reconciliation, those are the vessels, those sacraments are the wells, the wells that Jesus is allowing us to come to over and again as much as we need to be purified and to be made holy and to receive healing. If you ever hear that the Eucharist or reconciliation is not enough, 
I want you to know that that is the breath from hell. That is Satan himself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he says for us in our times, as he revealed to St. Faustina, the critical importance for us are all the sacraments, but especially those two. So what is your problem? That you don't feel Jesus? That you don't see him? He said that's not important because our minds could not even begin to understand or fathom how that happens. It's way farther than that, way, way deeper than that of our understanding about feeling and touching. It's very limited. God, in his omnipotence, surpasses that by oceans and oceans and oceans and then more. So stop trying to figure God out. Don't waste your time. Jesus said one by one. And God has that capability of healing each and every one of us. And there is no problem that he can't heal. Now, there's a lot in that too. Again, don't try to figure it out. God's time is different from our time. His hopes and his wishes for us are way deeper than what we even can realize. And it, guess what? It's not just about us. Your suffering, your pain, your addiction, your temptations, it's not just about you. You affect and have an effect on many people around you. problem is we are limited. We get bored. We pray for a bit and we start to see some change and then we give up. It's like being on a diet that we really don't want to be on. and We just kind of start it and we eat like salads for three days and then <laughs> <laughs> that's not how God wants us to be. God gave us fruit and vegetables and gave us meat and chicken and fish and he wants us to enjoy them. All within good and healthy reasons and ways. And so in the spiritual life as well. We can't give up. In your addiction, God is waiting for you to open your heart and come to him. Call it out. He told St. Faustina, Put it in my wounds. You look at the crucifix up there. Put it in his wounds. Open your heart. Call it out. Whatever it is, whatever the demon is that is, is causing you temptation or to gossip or to drink, to gamble, to wallow in your pain and suffering, whatever it is, instead of rising above it, of hatred and anger, don't get stuck. You do it to yourself. And you open the door to the devil by doing that. You want to disarm Satan in your life? You want to break the chains that hold you bound in whatever areas? Put whatever it is that has got you bound in the wounds of Jesus. Go to a holy priest. Make an appointment with him if you have to for the sacrament of reconciliation, God present to you, and give it all to him. And ask him to pray with you and for you. Receive the anointing of the sick if you need to get that. And then go to communion. Receive Jesus in holy communion. If we can be totally honest, if we can open the door of our heart and ask the Lord 
to give us light. Because sometimes we're so wrapped up we don't even know. It starts off with one thing and it ends up with 50 other problems. And it affects everyone around us. If you're anxietous, that's not what the Lord would have for you. You're too busy. It means you need to stop. Take some time to come before him in the blessed sacrament. Ask Jesus for the light. He said, I am the light. He will give you the truth. And then open your heart in confession. St. Faustina teaches us not every priest is a good spiritual director. Guess what? You and I have a responsibility for our own spirituality. But what do you do when you want to buy a car? You look at everything. How many miles? How many whatever that report thing is that you check out to find out what is the best, most economic, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You look for the best for your money. And yet spiritually, we just go from day to day, week to week, month to month. Just go rolling into the next thing. We get on the phone and we know maybe this isn't a phone call I should be making right now. I'm angry. And what's going to happen in that? I'm going to gossip. Don't make the phone call. If you know a particular store sells the filthy magazines that are pornographic, that are causing problems in your life, do not go to the store. Don't walk into that store and say, you know, God protect me, don't let this affect me. Hello. Avoid that temptation. Don't go there. Go someplace else that you know you can. Pray for God's grace and the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Listen, if you don't get this now and in these times, you are never going to make it. We aren't, won't make it. We're running all over the place looking for some kind of gimmick, program, plan, something that's going to do something new. And we haven't even given Jesus Christ a real chance. And by so many of our priests, we're being sold short. There are many godly and holy priests. But there are so many who are just not getting it from the pulpit. And I'm sorry. They have an obligation to preach it to us too. And if they would take the time, and if we would take the time, to do exactly what Jesus says, our prayers would be answered. Maybe it will be like St. Monica and take 40 years. Maybe because there's so much that has to happen that because of our own sins and those of our families, it's taking so much longer. What do you want that you think God can't give you. You have problems. Maybe it's marriage problems. Maybe it's mother-in-law problems. Maybe it's problems in the family. Like I said, addictions, drugs, drinking. Lay it down. Realize that you're not in heaven. So we have to do what Jesus says. Fight like valiant soldiers. He doesn't say hang out and limp around and just whatever. He said fight. Fight like valiant soldiers. Well, you can't give what you don't have. You can't just go sit in the pew and receive communion, go to confession and just think, well, what, you know, go through the rubrics of things. Do it again and again like it's the first time. Because really, every time you encounter Jesus, you can expect something new. Unless your eyes are covered, your ears are covered, and your heart is so calloused that you can't hear and you can't see. Listen, I still can't get over what happened a few weeks ago here. 
on the vigil of the Assumption. Our prayer minister, the eyesight was healed. Her eye was blocked, she couldn't see. During the third decade of the Rosary, she implored Our Lady, Our Lord through Our Lady, for healing so she can see. You can't, she couldn't stop weeping for Thanksgiving. Nobody was doing anything. God was in our midst. And Our Lady, her gown was just swooshing all over the place. She was busy doing a lot of stuff here. Do you know, do you have any idea how that stuff happens? It happens because you, people like you, come and pray, make penance. Our prayer ministers come here day after day. They give themselves. Who isn't busy today? Who doesn't have a load of wash to do or grandkids to babysit or work that grass that needs to be cut, whatever? We're all busy. But in spite of that, they come here. And why do they come here to this place? I believe two things. Jesus revealed this is the place where the two rivers run. Now the sacraments are in all the Catholic churches. But in this particular place, the beauty of this place of refuge, Jesus' words, is because so many years, these holy grounds, this holy church, was a place of perpetual adoration where a priest and his sister lived and breathed and taught and suffered. And the people of God came here year after year, day after day, and prayed. They prayed with faith, and that's what has to change in our lives. We have to be more faithful, all of us. We have to stop and recognize Something is an obstacle in our life that is separating us from the grace of God. Now, for whatever God's reason, I can't explain it, but I can tell you, sometimes God allows suffering, ongoing suffering. Again, that's oceans and oceans far beyond my capability of explaining. But deep in my soul, I know these are very holy people. Their suffering isn't taken just for themselves, especially if they're engaged in the spiritual life. If they are engaged in receiving and living a sacramental life, God will use that suffering. We see this in the lives of little children sometimes. We see this in adults who have ongoing. Now, that doesn't mean that we go around saying, poor me, look at me, or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking, or broadcasting that I am a victim soul. Forget that. When people talk like that, I run. I like the, the, the hidden, the quiet. That speaks holiness, because that's the way of the Lord. And Our Lady, they don't look for attention. They do their best to live their life. In our lives, when we encounter such suffering, when we look at the cross, we are transfigured, in the words of Brother Esteban, to the persona of Christ, the person of Christ. That is when we are like him. You know, all the times we pray the stations of the cross and say all those wonderful things about the walk of Jesus Christ in Calvary, that's our walk. That's the cross. And in those times, we do what he did. We submit, and we pray, and we pray for healing, if that's God's will. And of course, he said, I desire healing. Um, maybe the healing that God has in his heart is different from the healing that we're thinking about. Maybe God wants a different kind of healing for you, someone in your family, somebody in the purgatory of your family, some family member. Who knows? 
Maybe God is taking time to go deeper in our hearts and soul, in our marriages, in our families. And it's not for us to jibber-jabber and talk, 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 talk about it. It's about us to open our hearts to the Lord. Ask Him to go where we can't and where healing is needed. And trusting Him that in spite of all of it, we will remain faithful. We are the valiant soldiers of these times. And all the good that we do, we benefit from in ways that we aren't even aware of. But so do our brothers and sisters. The ones that we are related to by blood, but those around the whole world. Don't worry. This time on earth is very short. What? If you're lucky, 90, maybe 103, 4, 6, whatever the record is. But eternity is forever. Eternity is forever. Some of the saints, mystics, that have been blessed with visions of heaven, hell, and purgatory, and whose understanding about suffering is so profound, given by God, they would say, if we could only understand the redemptive value of suffering, we would ask God for more. Could you imagine that? I don't recommend asking God for anything like that. My opinion, I prefer to trust Jesus. He knows me. He knows what will break my back. So I don't go out there looking for more suffering. Whatever is on my plate, I do my best to handle like a valiant soldier. I don't go asking people, God, for people's cancer and take it away and do all that kind of stuff. I don't believe in that at all. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the most blessed Trinity. I believe God fashioned me in my mother's womb knowing full well of who I was going to be, what I have and what I have not. And so I trust him that whatever he gives me, I will pray and I promise throughout my life to fight like a valiant soldier. But the medicine for our times is what the world fights us with, and that's our time. We don't need to spend hours, necessarily. We need to have pure, clean time for and with God. We have to have that time with him, to give him, to listen to him, to submit everything to him, and then we need to give him our time of penance. Nobody wants to talk about that anymore. You don't hear anybody saying that. It's like kind of whacked out or something to talk about doing penance. Well, I see Satan's hand all over that. Blind that sucker. Don't give him any power. Offer up penance and sacrifice. Whatever. Don't go cycle. Just do what you can do. Like St. Therese. You can pick a string up off of the carpet and offer it in the name of Jesus Christ. You can sew something that you, sew your husband's sock that you don't want him to. Or go wash your wife's car and vacuum it and shine it. Or babysit for someone in your family or your next door neighbor or something. Those are things that are good and holy, worthy, corporal, spiritual works of mercy. That's how you fight like a valiant soldier. And in all of that, God will do something great. Open your eyes. Open your heart. Ask and submit. Amen. <coughs> One more thing. <coughs> In the summer. Finances are very tight, and you know, and that's good. Poverty is good. It shapes us. <clears throat> it 
makes us strong. We're paying our bills, and for that I thank God. But there is something extra that I would like to do that I can't afford to do right now, and that's to send Brother home. Brother Esteban has the opportunity to go home. He hasn't been home for some time <clears throat> on the anniversary of his father's death. I can't afford to do that. Um, but I'm praying, and we have lots of money, but it's in your pockets. <laughs> and not here. And, and let me tell you why I'm asking, because we always ask, and I don't want to put anything more on anybody, but Lord put on my heart. <clears throat> you know, he's a, he's a very uh, wise, intellectual person. Uh, and he's, he's in a special time right now. You know, he's waiting for God to bless him with some men to begin the religious congregation. But God is allowing him to suffer. And he could be up doing wonderful things and teachings and stuff, and occasionally he does. He's been a, a great help to me in this ministry and following the directive of the Lord about raising things in the level of holiness. What God has him doing for right now is to be the doorkeeper. That's what the Lord told me. He's the doorkeeper. He's in the bookshop, shop, gift shop, ordering things, working things out, doing whatever to raise it up, to get it to where we need it to be. But in that time, people walk in and they ask him questions. They ask him spiritual things. He hears all kinds of stories, and he's there. So I would like to give him some vacation time. We know the doorkeeper is very important. We have some very holy and special doorkeepers in the history of our church. And for me, that's what brother is for now. And so <clears throat> as his sister, I just ask. I have someone has already donated $100. It's going to take $500 just to um, do the accommodations or whatever, of driving and whatever, playing, whatever he's doing. Anyway, that's just the cost. If you could find it in your heart today to help me to meet that goal, I would greatly appreciate it. Don't burden yourself. If it doesn't happen, everything is in God's hands, but I trust that it will. So if you can afford it, I'm going to put a basket at the altar with the first $100. And if you have whatever you have to put in that basket, um, we'll work towards getting him home, God willing, for his father's anniversary, which is the 30th, 30th of this month. May God bless all of us. We have a, a wonderful long weekend coming up. Enjoy the summer. God's creation. Make sure you take some time to take your cup of coffee or a nice Cold beer, if you can, if that's not a problem. <laughs> Take it outside as you are relaxing under a nice tree with a sandwich or something. Be with your family, good friends. Spend time with Jesus and have great expectations for him. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Yes. Kathy, yes. Where is Mr. Esteban home? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's, Italy is for us, okay? He's, he's in Texas. His family's in Texas. Yes, it's in Texas, yeah. yeah. He hasn't been home yet for the anniversary of his father's death. So they're looking forward to maybe having their son and brother home for, for this weekend. So God willing, it will happen if it's meant to be. Thank you for your kindness and your generosity. Yep. yep. You make out a check, but we all know just to make it out to servants. Of make it out to the Divine Mercy Center. <clears throat> yeah, this this particular uh, collection, or I'm just going to put it up here. You do whatever you want. Is going to be a restricted donation. Oh, okay. So you write it. Okay. It goes to the, write it to Divine Mercy Center, and there are envelopes in your pew, and you could just write Brother Esteban. We know what it's for, and it will be given to him. Okay. Many have done quite a bit already, and especially, thank you so much for the beds. We, we have all the beds we need for the sisters and, and future brothers, God willing. We're having a, a come and see or open your heart, they call it, for religious vocations retreat. So we are all set, top notch, brand new beds and mattresses and stuff. So praise God. He answers our prayers through, through your help. 
But please do continue to pray for us that um, each thing that the Lord has placed on our heart, we continue to accomplish. God bless you for all of your faithfulness, your dedication, and your prayers, and for being here. It's such a blessing, and it's so good for our family to be together. God love you.